from the highest point in the Philippine highway system. Welcome to the GCN Show! Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, just how fit are Tour de France cyclists and are they really the most powerful bike riders? We've also got some cutting edge science that will help us all ride a little bit faster. And all the latest news in the cycling world that's got Tour de France fever. This week in the world of cycling, the Tour de France has actually started, uh, as has La Course, which unfortunately has already finished, given that it's still a one-day race. Uh, but there, we learnt that Lizzie Dignan is officially back to her best. Her win in that race marked her second big victory in the space of just a few days. Yeah, now we also learned this week that Julien Alaphilippe is just about the most exciting male bike rider out there at the moment. He absolutely lit up stage two of the Tour de France. And as we're filming this, he's still wearing the yellow jersey. There might have been a massive news flash yes. just then, because of course, uh, these days, anything at all can happen at the Tour de France. Yes, now we also learned this week, courtesy of Julien Alaphilippe's bike sponsor Specialized, that he became the first rider to win a road stage of the Tour de France using clincher tires and inner tubes, mm. which I don't know about you, Dan, failed to bowl me over when that press release landed in my inbox. But no. nevertheless, there you well, go. we've been using clinchers for a long time, yeah. haven't we? Here, at didn't GZ. win a stage of the tour, though. <laughs> no, we haven't done no. that part. Uh, but what that press release failed to address was whether or not it was that particular setup which caused him to have six punctures at Strada Bianca. A couple yeah, of and, weeks ago. and one at Milan San Remo mm. as well. Hopefully, if we have just had a news flash, that's not the reason why. Anyway, this week we wanted to look at just how fit. Tour de France cyclists really are, and whether they are the most powerful bike riders out there. Mm. So firstly, we are going to be measuring this fitness in what? So basically how much power a rider can produce. It's basically like cycling's equivalent of how much you can sort of bench press in a gym, but yeah. without the gurning part yeah. of it. And without the muscles as well. <laughs> yeah. Now, to be able to win the Tour de France, you need to be able to put out loads of power. That kind of goes without saying, doesn't it? But sprints don't really matter in the hunt for the yellow jersey. You need to be able to put out power for longer duration, so kind of five minutes and then up to and over, in fact, one hour. Mm. And to give you an idea, if you want to be anywhere really in the cycling world these days professionally, you need to be able to produce upwards of 400 watts average for an hour. And to put that into perspective, a good amateur cyclist is probably more like 250 watts. So a tour rider is doing almost double then, but yet that's actually not the full story because the Tour de France is generally won and certainly always for some lost in the long mountain climbs of the Alps and the Pyrenees where absolute power is not everything because you also need to be super lightweight as well. Yeah, you do. That's most of the reason why we all look so good down the gym in vests, oh, really, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, now, to find out your power to weight ratio, all you need to do is divide your power by your weight in kilograms. Uh, now, the best riders at the Tour de France will generally have a power output of about six and a half watts per kilo for an hour. Uh, and you'll generally find out who's got the best watts per kilo at the end of the Tour de France because they'll be in the yellow jersey when it gets to Paris. Not always, of course, because a lot can play out over the course of 21 stages, but generally that is the case. Yeah, meanwhile, what is our good amateur cyclist doing? Well, now we're doing less than half of what a Tour de France rider is capable of because about three watts per kilo is about what you'd be looking at, mm. I'd suspect. But it's not actually the featherweights, you know, the mountain goats, that have got the best absolute power. Uh, that really is more with the time trial specialists. Uh, so with those guys, you're looking at 450 watts plus. And rumour has it actually that when Brad Wiggins won the tour back in 2012, uh, that he was pushing out roughly 460 watts in time trials for around about an hour. Uh, and that Tony Martin, in his heyday, four-time world time trial champion, uh, has averaged 480 watts. You know, Bradley Wiggins 460 is what made me retire. One of the things. <laughs> when I realised that that's just how good it was possible to get. Yeah. I was like, right, yeah. like your VO2 max and mine is his threshold. <laughs> <laughs> we joke. But, well, actually, you know, we don't joke. That is kind of true, isn't it? Nevertheless, it is mind blowing just how much power those riders can produce. And certainly, there's no other cyclist anywhere in the world that can get close to a Tour de France cyclist for those longer aerobic efforts. Not for the longer ones. But what about peak power? 
Uh, that, of course, will not get you in the yellow jersey by the time you get to Paris. Uh, but those short efforts could net you one, two, or maybe even six stage wins on the way to it. Indeed. Now, interestingly, absolute max power here, again, doesn't win out. As well as tactics, aerodynamics also plays a part. And so often you'll find that smaller but less powerful riders are the ones that are favoured. Caleb Ewan, stage three winner, prime example. He can win with about 1,400 watts, whereas someone like veteran sprinter Andre Greipel pushed nearly 2,000 watts. Sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Well, it is a lot, yeah. you know, compared to some people, yeah. but when you compare it to the best in some other cycling disciplines, you realise that Tour de France sprinters are quite puny, really. Yeah, take that with your rippling calf muscles, Andre Greipel. To put him in perspective, next to one of the best track riders in the world, Gregory Bourget, who could put out about two and a half thousand watts on his day. Wow. Yeah. Well, that definitely is a lot. Uh, but we were starting to wonder what is the peak power ever recorded by anyone in the world ever. Uh, and actually, it doesn't seem to be a track cyclist, does it? Uh, we don't know the definite world record on this point of view, uh, but we think we've come close with this next example. Well, indeed, yeah. So this is two-time Olympian BMXer Nick Long putting out some ridiculous power here on a watt bike. Have a guess. Have a guess how much power he was putting out there. Uh, well, yeah, some of you are not too far off there. Well done. 2,657 watts. Oh. And apparently his ultimate goal uh, is 31 watts per kilo, Ooh. which I guess is the ultimate goal for quite a lot of us. Well, indeed. It? You'd need... You'd need not just two legs down, but I think four legs wouldn't you, to get <laughs> yeah. close to, uh, to that power output. Yeah, no, I, I think I can probably do about 15 watts per kilo. So again, less than half for Joe Average here. Well, you're definitely not average, are you, when it oh, comes to sprinting? Yeah. And so you're slightly below average. <laughs> I was Truth waiting for that. I was waiting for that. Uh, now, for BMXs, it's obviously incredibly important to have that maximum peak power because they don't have to pedal all that much, do they? A few pedal strokes to get out of the gate and then in between the massive, massive jumps that they also have to do. Uh, that video actually came from Wattbike, who've got quite the database, really, when it comes to power numbers. Uh, and not all from cyclists, actually. Bob Slay, anybody? Uh, Greg Cackett has apparently produced 2,501 watts Whoa. on a Wattbike. And even footballers, stroke soccer players, can do over 2,000. Yeah. It'd be great, wouldn't it, to get uh, people from other sports to have a go at like max sprint. Mm. Although apparently, uh, we've been speaking to Manon, haven't we? And she said that putting out power output uh, on an indoor trainer or a watt bike is vastly different to putting out power in a velodrome. Uh, yeah. And that is where we would shine, apparently, Si, given wow. our track, craft and skills. Exactly. Yeah, making up for a serious lack of wattage <laughs> there. Uh, now, speaking of Manon, she can, of course, out sprint to either one of us. Well, with only one leg, again, mm. probably. Um, but uh, but she was saying that um, the top female track sprinters can put out over 1,600 watts right. as well. Which is mad, isn't it? Well, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, we also started wondering, though, what the peak power output recorded was from non-cyclists. We've already talked about bobslayers. Uh, but apparently, uh, Usain Bolt, or Usain Bolt, uh, has had his uh, power recorded whilst running uh, and has done 2,617 and a half watts whilst running. Yeah, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? Now, of course, not quite as powerful as our BMX and Nick Long, but I wouldn't mind seeing Usain Bolt on a BMX. That's yeah. for sure. I bet, he'd be, I bet he'd be really good, actually, wouldn't he? Obviously, Annoyingly he's quite tall, good. But yeah, yeah, I bet he'd just fly. He, he would look jumps. quite weird on a BMX with the height he's at, doesn't he? Yeah, he would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, in summary, basically, Tour de France cyclists are the best in the world when it comes to power outputs over those longer durations of five minutes to one hour. But being able to ride three and a half thousand kilometers of mountainous terrain in just three weeks does mean that even the most powerful tour riders sacrifice a little bit of top end compared to riders from other disciplines. So the ultimate cycling powerhouses come from the tracks, velodromes and BMX. Next up, of course, it's GCN Inspiration, uh, which is your weekly chance to win one of three prizes, which vary every week. Uh, all you've got to do is upload your inspirational cycling photos or videos to the GCN app. Yeah, we will start this week with third place. As ever. 
Yeah, yeah, we always start with third place. And <laughs> we will start this week, as we always do, with third place winning some ground coffee. Ooh, oh, yeah, nice. GCN coffee. Happy days. Anyway, the winner is Alex M. Uh, this photo, he said, is taken from the Netherlands, Utrecht. Uh, we might have any mountains, but the sunset over the lakes is absolutely Oh, we've already got stunning. sunset in straight away, Si. Yeah, look at that. that Suckers is cool, for it? sunsets and sunrises as ever, and that is a cracking photo there, yeah. isn't it, from Alex? So well done to you. There's uh, kind of shots of like the front of the bike sort of poised over like a view or something. It always makes me think it's like a, like something out of Transformers, like the bike is sort of taking the photo of itself. Remember how long I spent in Gran Canaria when we were doing that ride uh, <laughs> over there, trying to get those those handlebar shots. I do indeed, the yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, Alex, let us know if you like ground coffee or full beans. And, uh, oh, he's got a choice, has he? I don't know, actually. But <laughs> let, us know, let us know what your preference is and we'll send out whatever we've got. Uh, right, anyway, you do have a choice in the GCN shop, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> what kind of coffee you'd like. Uh, moving on to second place, uh, no choice here, you get an Epic Climbs Koppenberg tea. Uh, why would you want anything else anyway? Uh, it comes from Laurie Clouseau. If I had a Bianchi, it would have matched the lake. Wow. Uh, which is a very apt description, isn't it? After 32 kilometres of climbing, I was welcomed by the sublime uh, Lac de Moirie, perched at 2,250 metres of altitude in the Valais Alps. Never wow. thought a colour could be so intense. Uh, and it is very intense, isn't it? It is, isn't it? That's amazing. I'm going to have to Google Lac de Moirie because I don't know what 32 kilometre climb goes up there, but I think it's one that we might need to do. I think point. Laurie's got some Celeste. Uh, at least one Celeste bottle going on there. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's almost like, I'm obviously a, a fan of the colour. Fair play. Right, now in first place this week, winning a Castelli Pro Training Squadra jersey, which is pretty cool, isn't it? Is this one from Bryant J. And it just blows me away, Dan, when I look at this. Um, it received an awful lot of likes in the GCN app. So this uh, is... Um, from Auckland uh, in New Zealand. He says, although still in lockdown level three, it didn't stop Mark Erickson escaping the city to ride along the black sands of, now, I don't know how you pronounce this. Care Care, I'm going for. Care Care? I'm, I'm uh, pretty sure it's not Care Care, but we'll go with that. And Watipu uh, at dawn. So there we go. That just blows me away. Mm. Um, we're not really sure who's getting the prize there. Is it, is it Brian TJ or Brian J or is it um, Mark Erickson? Uh, either way, one of you is going to get that Castelli Pro Training Squad jersey. Have we just created an inspirational controversy, Dan? Well, possibly, yeah. You can't split a jersey, can you? You can't split a no, jersey. You decide between yourselves. Also, you can't nick someone else's photo. So, uh, so yeah. Oh, well, yeah, maybe he's done that. Brian TJ. <laughs> want you to be honest with us now. Winning courtesy of somebody else's work. Now, we've had three photos already. We've got a bonus for you this week uh, because we've got our cycling inspiration transformation, I guess, of yeah. the week. And it's coming from Gareth Thomas MBE. Uh, new bike treat on losing six stone in nine months. Wow. Uh, so obviously, as he said, he's bought himself a new bike. Hell of a lot six stone to lose uh, in any Brilliant. number of months, let alone nine. So in October 2019, he was 21 stone with dodgy knees. I've taken up road cycling in February of this year, lost six stone and counting. As a special reward, I took delivery of a brand new Orbea Orca. Cycling has changed my life. Uh, thank you all at GCN for helping me on that journey. Well, it's very much our pleasure. Yeah, um, that but you've done all lovely. the work there and well, what work you've achieved. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm just looking at the bike. It's lovely. <laughs> I suppose in this instance, we're not supposed to be looking at the bike, si, but no, yeah, sorry. It is yeah. rather nice. Well, nice you did, you've done a cracking job choosing that. Yeah, love it. Anyway, there we go. Uh, do remember to uh, keep all of your inspirational photos coming in on the GCN app. Absolutely brilliant. And we pick just the best three each week, but there's so many other cool ones to flick through on there. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. We'll start Cycling Shorts with two great little science nuggets for you that we found courtesy of links on the Cycling Science Twitter feed. Firstly, have you been wondering just how much pro cyclist fitness levels have eroded during coronavirus lockdown? What do you mean, no? Of course you've been wondering <laughs> yeah. that. Uh, and we can now tell you, courtesy of sports scientist at Kaka Rural, uh, he's been crunching the numbers from that point of view. Apparently, they lost between 1% and 19% of their fitness. Wow. Quite a lot. That is a lot, isn't it? Now, those percentages were calculated from the riders' best 5 and 20-minute powers, riders from that team, of course. And, uh, and they were doing, he said, about 12 hours of training indoors per week. Yeah, I expected their numbers to be 
pretty much the same or even better from doing the indoor training for yeah. the five and 20 minutes. Uh, but regardless, we've been considering whether or not this means that you cannot get screaming fit by riding and training indoors. Uh, and the answer is no, uh, but it just highlights really just how much extra training you've got to do to be a top level pro. Yeah, 19%. I'm wondering whether that rider just... Wasn't just, doing 12 hours. No, I'm just <laughs> taking the mix, sat on the sofa training indoors. Mm. Um, anyway, our second scientific nugget actually shows how we can all get a little bit of a performance boost without doing any extra training. So this one comes courtesy of Ali Astakorki in the Journal of Sports Science. Oh, that is actually one I've read. Yeah. You can ride significantly faster if you're not looking at negative imagery while you're doing it, okay? So the test was to put a whole load of experienced cyclists through a 10-mile simulated time trial while looking at either positive, neutral, or distressing images. The latter increased people's times significantly whilst not increasing their perceived effort of exertion or indeed their heart rate, suggesting that if you're in the right frame of mind, you go a lot faster. We've obviously never been in the right frame of mind, so <laughs> have we? Uh, but maybe positive imagery is the secret to this next man's achievements. Hiromu Inada of Japan is officially the oldest ever competitor at the Ironman World Championships because he competed there in Kona a couple of years ago. But according to Channel News Asia, he's at it again. Next year, in 2021, he's going to do it again. Fair play. Whoa, at 88. Mm. Do you know what? That's great news for all of us. Not least because it means that we can put off that midlife crisis Iron Man just a little bit longer. We've got way more time than we thought, so perhaps you just make do with buying a Porsche in the meantime. Well, I've already got a Skoda, so I'll probably have to do the Iron Man for my ah, midlife that crisis. Is so I am now yeah. 40. Yes, I'm not sure I've mentioned that before. Uh, moving on, you may well have heard of International L before because we've spoken about it on the GCN show and they do loads of other great stuff too. Uh, basically, their mission each year is to highlight gender inequality within the world of cycling. And they do that by riding the Tour de France route one day ahead of the men. Uh, however, this year they are making things much more difficult for themselves, uh, partially because it's much more difficult to travel. So instead, that international group of female uh, amateur cyclists is remaining in the UK, uh, where they'll be doing the entire Tour de France distance and elevation gain in the space of four days. Whoa! Blimey! Now, as we film this, which I think is about three days since they started, they're 2,345 kilometres of the way through. So. Pretty cracking effort there. Um, and also, sticking with the theme of women riding the Tour de France for a moment, it seems like the message is getting through because there are rumours that a women's Tour de France will indeed be happening in 2022. Mm, strong rumours as well, because there are more details within these rumours. So apparently, it's set to start on the final day of the men's race, which of course takes place on the Champs-Élysées in Paris, and will then run for eight days after that, which is great news. Uh, the biggest part of that great news is the fact we've got a women's Tour de France, potentially. Yep. Uh, a bit late coming, you've got to say, but finally it should be here in 2022. The other piece of good news is the fact that we've now got a solution for that post Tour de France lull where you don't know what to do with yourself because yeah. there's no racing to watch because we've now got a second Tour de France. Yeah, I think, to be fair, it's an inspired decision actually because a lot of people are after the two races running concurrently. But actually, I think it'd be much better to have them separate because then you can focus on each one, give it your undivided attention. As can journalists and broadcasters. Exactly. Happy days. Um, now, seeing the Tour de France again, it's not often that we get to play cycling kit hot or not mid-season, but thanks to the name change from Team Ineos to Team Ineos Grenadiers, we get to do exactly that. Uh, so our mates at Castelli have fashioned up this new, very snazzy looking dark blue and red kit. Dan, hot or not? I'm, I'm actually going to say no. <laughs> oh. Sorry, Dan. Hot or not? <laughs> what do you think then, Dan? Hot or not? Well, uh, I'm not going to give you a straight answer because initially, when I just saw the jersey on its own, I was thinking hot. I think it looks rather smart. But yeah. since the Tour de France has started and I've seen them, or, or not very well in the peloton, I just don't think it stands out that well. Ooh. So I'm saying not now. So like, so like too cool for school, potentially. Yeah. Well, let's see what Luke Rowe thinks about it. Ah, yeah. yeah, clearly a fan. Indeed. Well, maybe it's because he's camouflaged now. <laughs> just go anywhere he wants yeah. with an invisibility. Well, he, it does look good there because he's on his own. 
Uh, so you've got nothing else to look at. Uh, but when there's lots of other stuff to look at, you can't see that. Anyway, uh, every year, as many of you all know, we love talking about the cycling transfer rumour mill. So called because the official transfers can't be announced until August the 1st. And before then, they are just rumours. However, with the revised season coming so late this year, uh, they can all be officially announced and we're having them coming thick and fast at the moment. We are indeed. Two big ones this week. Firstly, Michael Matthews has been released early from his contract with Sunweb and will be returning to Mitchelton Scott where World Road Race champ Annemiek van Vluten will be leaving. She is off to the Movistar women's team mm. next year, which is an interesting move, isn't it? And apparently that was a rumour for quite some time. Australians are going to be so happy to have bling back in their team, aren't they? They will. Now, we have some exciting giveaway news for you now. Firstly, we've got some results to read out. This uh, is the hotly anticipated Wahoo Kicker fifth generation that uh, Ollie unboxed well, a few weeks ago now. Mm. We've all been patiently waiting for the results to be read out. Uh, should we do our own drum roll? Rubbish, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, but keeping the suspense going. We'll probably I think use this, actually, now, <laughs> couldn't we? Oh, yeah, that's good. Right. Uh, anyway, we're going to announce the lucky winner now. It is Matt Redford uh, oh. from FL. We think that's Florida. Might be Finland, but we're presuming Florida. Well done to you, Matt. It'll be winging its way to you very shortly indeed. Well, it won't wing very well because they weigh a ton. They do, the don't they? The flywheel is, is so weighty, which is a good thing, um, that your, your postman's probably going to... Yeah, All the way to maybe we'll put it on a boat. You'll see it next year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, we've got a new giveaway to announce for this week, courtesy of our mates over at Muckoff. So you have the opportunity to win a pressure washer bundle. Uh, there's a bit of controversy actually about these pressure washers in GSIN well, Towers the because was... Cy and Manon have one. They've been sent one by, by our mates at Muckoff. Uh, yeah. Me and Ollie have not. No. Ollie is particularly actually devastated he about is. the fact that he has not got one so far. It comes up in most morning meetings. Uh, so hopefully they'll send him one soon. Ah, oh, well, I can tell you firsthand that it's brilliant, Ollie. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, you. Uh, well, in fact, as you can see in the uh, the GCN Tech video where Manon uh, demonstrates how to clean a filthy bike. So uh, anyway, if you want to try and win uh, this pressure washer bundle, then uh, you can click on the link in the description. You can get through to the giveaway page. Good luck, Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> Hack. Whoa. Forward slash bodge of the week now, keeping you on your toes. So I've been, been napping. You've you? been away for a couple of weeks. Yeah, well, I've been on holiday and so I'm fresh as a daisy now. Mm, uh, unlike me. <laughs> anyway, uh, first up in hack forward slash bodge of the week this week, uh, it comes in from Charging Gourmet, battery powered bike pump. Fed up with having to charge my battery pump every other tyre, so I installed a 20 times bigger battery, added a nice silker pump head and huge pressure gauge. Pumping tyres is a pleasure now. Wow. When you say you added those things, you, you've effectively just just invented a, uh, a, a battery-powered bike thing, haven't you? It looks Fantastic. great. I mean, it, when I was younger, my dad had an air compressor from an old garage, so I did used to pump my tyres up with that. Did you? Then maybe so that be a bit careful with road tyres. What's that, sorry? Maybe that explains why your biceps aren't really big. <laughs> you have to pump your tyres up. Yes. Um, well, Speaking of which, John Herity probably could have done with this contraption yesterday uh, on the World of Cycling show. You'll be able to watch that tomorrow, incidentally. A little plug for that one over on GCN's Race Pass, but uh, without giving too much away, he wasn't particularly quick. <laughs> uh, right, are we going to say hack or bodge? Oh, I've said hack, definitely. I'm saying that. hack, 100%. That looks great. Um, and if you want to make a second one, send it my way. Well, you're saying 100%, so I, 83% of the public are saying hack. And You'd 17%, say that's a bodge. Well, I don't know, 17% of people said it was a bodge. Oh. Not, not sure I agree with you guys. Uh, anyway, next up, uh, now this takes a bit of time to really appreciate, I think, Dan. Um, so sent in by On The Level, uh, it's called Basket Case. Um, and he said, um, he mounted a basket on my wife's bike, so uh, that he- He mounted wouldn't... a basket on your wife's bike, did he? Who was? On my wife's bike. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, no, on it. he mounted a basket on his wife's bike <laughs> um, so that it, it cleared the cables, basically. And I was looking at it thinking, well, that's neat. It looks like he's just bought something specifically for the purpose. But no, it's a refashioned old seat post. Just have a look at the craftsmanship. That's amazing. Hack from me. Yeah, hack from me as well. And a hack from 76% of you, unsurprisingly. In nice. fact, it's uh, slightly surprising. It's not a greater percentage than that. Next up, Tommy P. HVC. 
uh, Windy Miller Massive Attack. A day bright uh, Lazine light with the original mount taken off and replaced with a Garmin mount. On the underside, on the underside of my K-Edge, I've screwed in another bracket, which then allows the light to not be seen from above when riding. Perfect little light to be seen during the day. Nice. I, I think that looks cool, rather neat. Yeah, I do. Well, as well. I mean, the initial picture, I wasn't too sure, but um, yeah, it looks good to me that one. A hack, yeah. I'm going for hack as well. Nice. Right then, next up, uh, we've got this sent in by 718 Reddick. Uh, this uh, is a rim lamp, he said. Uh, made a lamp out of an old aluminium rim. Um, now, firstly, I would hope that that wheel was trashed because that is a very nice Mavic Caesarium wheel. And I know this because I have had several pairs in the past. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, you know, it's a classic. That. It is, yeah. It's an absolute classic. Um, and, and I'll be completely honest, I don't like what you've done with it. I think oh, that looks that, a bit rubbish. You're going for bodge already. Well, I, I, yeah. Do you know what? I was going to go bodge. Yeah, I'm going to say bodge. I'm sorry about that. Uh, just doesn't turn. Uh... Oh, and actually, I, I thought most people would go for hack on that one, in members of the public, but 57% really? went for bodge. Well, there we go then. Uh, so fairly in agreement with us. Yeah. Uh, right, the last one for this week comes in from T966-817-8001. Apparently T966-817-800 was already taken. Ah, uh, so yeah. Uh, picking up parcels. Picking up parcels today, forgot my backpack, but had some duct tape, uh, so all was well. That is a heavily laden Scott um, addict, presumably, is it there? Well, uh, we, we don't know, Dan, because it's covered in parcels. That is remarkably uh, well packed. It looks packed. quite aero. Well, it does. I'm wondering how wide those parcels are. Like, mm. you know, between your legs, are you going to be like knees out? But um, you? you say that's a bodge? Yeah, it's just gaffer tapes parcels. To All right, bike. fair enough. Yeah, it is a bodge. I mean, yeah. I, I like it a lot. I think it's a genius, but yeah, fair enough, it's okay. a bodge. Well, 80% of people are in agreement with us okay. on that one side. Uh, don't forget that next week's Hacks and Bodges are already up on the GCN app if you would like to get voting now. Uh, and if you'd like to contribute, you can upload your Hacks and Bodges to the GCN app uh, and they will be available for us to look at in the next couple of weeks. It's time now for Caption Competition, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. Um, all you've got to do is put a witty caption to a photo that we're about to give you. And as ever, we're going to start with the results from last week first. We are. Uh, almost all of you, unsurprisingly, were better than the caption that I started with on last week's show. Uh, the photo, to remind you, is of Owen Dool. Uh, in the rain, for some reason he's got one of his shoes off. And the winning caption comes in from Damien Mitchell. Caption, hey Owen, I think there's something in your shoe. In, in, your, sh in your shoe. I think there's something in your shoe. So I didn't quite say that right. I've, I've ruined your caption, Damien, it which looks is very good. It down, doesn't it, than, <laughs> than, than Dan reading it Well, out, we've just realised that now, haven't we? We have indeed, um, yeah. I'll do it again. Hi, Owen, uh, I think there's something in your shoe. Marginally better on my part there, yeah. but uh, a thoroughly deserving winning caption, <laughs> I think you will agree. Yes, yes, thoroughly deserving. Uh, right, next up, we have this then for you to get your teeth stuck into this week. I mean, literally get your mm. teeth stuck into when you look at Egan Bernal there. Um, yeah, uh, okay, right. Team Ineos launched new Gabba face mask. Made that up on the spot, as you can Did probably you? tell. Yeah, that <laughs> was brilliant. It's been two weeks of pretty bad ones now. Uh, I'm going to make sure I make more of an effort next week. I hope so. Mm. But um, anyway, it's a great photo for you all to get stuck in. Uh, remember, the best caption gets a bottle next week. We have plucked out a few of our favourite comments from the previous seven days, which we're going to go through before we let you know what's coming up on GCN over the next seven. Uh, we're going to start with a couple that came underneath Jeremy's Tour de France explainer video, uh, which was very good indeed. Yeah. And I can thoroughly recommend it to, well, any of you, but particularly people that are just into the sport now. Uh, Fabian B. How to get your friends into cycling? Just let Jeremy talk to them for two minutes and they will see the key to happiness. Um, that goes pretty much everything when it comes to talking to Jeremy. Indeed. Whilst Manuel said, uh, why am I watching this having followed 25 consecutive years of pro cycling? Well, that is a good point, actually. I mean, uh, but I'm glad you watched it and um, you seem to have enjoyed it as well, I guess. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah. Worth, always worth clicking on a video, isn't it? Mm. Um, right then, underneath uh, the uh, Ollie versus Blake, um, Ollie on a man bike versus Blake on a gravel bike. I didn't click bike. on that one because I, I assumed that uh, Blake won. Uh, well, <laughs> funnily enough, 
Um, James Keeley said, uh, haven't even started the challenge yet and I can tell that Blake will destroy him. <laughs> yeah. um, but, and, then, uh, and then, unfortunately, this next comment made me think that perhaps we shouldn't get Blake back on the channel, Dan, because uh, Adam Short said, Blake is the best presenter ever. What a treat to have him on GCN. Uh, I'd love to see more GMBN thoughts on gravel biking. So I just thought perhaps we could just... And that had 290 back. likes. That is, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think maybe we should just... Best presenter ever. Blake, yeah, we should, we should just not, not have him back. Mm. That's, that's not honest. <laughs> right, uh, underneath tyre width and stopping distance, Lisa Rogers. Did anybody tell Jeremy it's GCN does science, plus he needs some glasses there as well? Yeah, well I noticed um, from watching that video and then all the comments, a lot of people have got very invested in uh, Jeremy's experiments, so I think he's going to go back and have to do it again. Is it? Wow, it's all to do with tyre pressure and tyre width, Dan. Mm. So that's controversial. So, uh, and also I think the results were unexpected for a lot of people. So yeah, cracking video though. I liked it very much. Uh, right, in terms of what is coming up on GCN uh, this week, there's absolutely stacks. Um, so on GCN main channel, we have got uh, how to make cycling more comfortable as a woman. So Manon is taking you through those steps. We've also got the 10 best things about bike riding. But we've also got so much stuff on GCN Racing, haven't we? Uh, and then of course on GCN Race Pass at the moment with the Tour de France on. Oh, well, we have, yeah. In, in certain territories, we have the Tour de France coverage live. As ever, you need to make sure what is available in your particular country. Uh, but we'll also have short highlights in every territory of Race Pass and uh, the breakaway show after every single stage. Uh, we're trying to get that out at 7 p.m. UK time, so 8 p.m. Uh, Central European Summer Time, CEST. Uh, that features Bradley Wiggins as a regular pundit every single day. Sean Kelly will be there as well, as will Brian Smith, and Ola Shenoui is also contributing, so one's not to miss, I think. It's time for Extreme Corner. Yes, um, I don't know whether you remember Extreme Corner, because it has been a little while. I guess the world's not been doing extreme stuff, Dan, over the past few months. Not that we've found <laughs> or got permission for, as no. the case may be. Anyway, we've got an absolute cracker for you this week. This is Andrea Marinelli doing commuter bike trials. It's great to have Extreme Corner back and with a cracking video like that too. It is. I just kept thinking about his poor hands. Like, can you imagine like riding down steps on a commuter bike like that? It'd be like holding on to like, I don't know, a pneumatic drill or something. Mm. Brutal. Anyway, right. fair play to you, Andrea. <laughs> yeah, I think that was very good. Hopefully I'll have another one for you again next week, fingers crossed. Right, uh, that is pretty much the end of the GCN show for this week. Uh, don't forget to head over to the GCN shop if you would like to get any merchandise. We've got some French flavoured stuff over there for you at the moment. Shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com or you can find a link on your screen right now. Fortunately, the coffee that we sell there is not distinctly French flavoured. So uh, <laughs> that's good. It's, uh, it's top stuff. Um, top joke, that's top joke. Are. Yeah, uh, right. The other thing as well, um, Dan's far too modest to say so, but do make sure um, if you are in the right territory, you head over to, uh, to GCN Race Pass and subscribe because the Tour de France stuff we've got on there at the moment, led by Dan, is absolutely brilliant. So uh, yeah, peerless insight, I think. Um, otherwise, we'll catch you next week. Yeah, see you later.